Okay, let's talk about geometry scripting. So as I mentioned in the previous videos, you got to make sure that you have the geometry script enabled, which you can find right here. It's not going to be enabled by default as of 5.3. And I've got my editor utility widget demo here. So as far as the designer end is concerned, there's a single button. This is called BTN do something. And we have this graph here. On event construct, we're going to bind this event to when this button gets clicked. So I'm going to get rid of these just to clear up some of the clutter. And currently we're just printing the string. What I want to do up here on the event construct is I need to create a reference to the dynamic mesh pool. So we're going to be creating a bunch of dynamic meshes. And then when we're done with them, we'll be returning them back to this pool. So I don't know what else to say about it. You'll see how it works here in a second. So we're going to use this geometry script utility, create dynamic mesh pool. And I only need to do this one time. So I'm going to do it on the event construct. And then I'm going to create a reference to it here in my variables. And I need to make sure that I set this to dynamic mesh pool for the object type. And I'm going to select set and we'll just plug it in like this. So on event construct, we're going to bind this event to when this button gets clicked, we're going to create our dynamic mesh pool, and then we are going to create a local reference to that so that we can reuse it. So instead of printing, what I'm going to do now, we're going to grab our uh, dynamic mesh pool once again, but this time we're going to select get to pull off and I'm going to type request mesh. So we now have a dynamic mesh and it's usually a good idea to create a local variable for this as well, because we'll be referring to this thing and modifying it throughout. And we'll pull off dynamic mesh. We'll select set. So now all I want to do is I'm going to just type in box. And you can see we're going to scroll down a bit to append box. And it'll give you some options here for how big you want it to be. And I'm fine with all this stuff. We may need to give it a transform. You can actually find out if you need to transform by trying to compile it. Okay. It's got a default transform, which is probably just going to be at the world origin. And so now we need to save this to a static mesh. And let me just double check here. If you mouse over this, you'll see that the target is a dynamic mesh object reference. So we can create new static mesh asset from mesh. We need to give it a path and a name. Let's compile and save. So here you can see the path of this thing is going to be content, third person maps, underscore generated Isaac PC. So for now we can just be working here. So I'm going to make a new variable here called path. We'll make it a string. For now, I'll just set it up here. I'm going to write it all out, pause the video for a second. Okay. So there's one really important thing that even though this says content here in the, uh, in the outliner or so the content browser, the actual path here is going to be game. So if you mouse over any of these assets, let's see if it'll do it for me. You can see the path there, game, third person, blah, blah, blah. So always remember whenever you see content in your path, as far as the actual unreal path is concerned, it's going to need to be game. So we've got forward slash game and then third person maps generated Isaac PC. And I've got my forward slash added in to the end of the path there. So I can just do a string append and that'll give me the option to combine strings. I'm going to go ahead and grab my path. We'll get it. I'm going to plug it in here and I'll just make this. temp mesh. 
and we will plug it directly into the create new static mesh node. We will I'm gonna stop it, we'll run it again. So we can just dock this thing over here. One of the nice things about the uh, editor utility widgets is they can be docked. So if this all works, we're gonna get a cube here. I'm gonna push this button and there we go. All right, so very, very, very simple. There's a few more things that we need to do here. Once we're done with this mesh, we need to return it to the dynamic mesh pool. So this is gonna be the final static mesh. If we wanted to assign a material or whatever, we, would, we could use that or, or set this to a variable or something. But this is our target mesh here. And this is our dynamic mesh pool. So I think we want to probably pull this off of the dynamic mesh pool. We will get it. And then there's going to be a return all meshes or return mesh. In this case, well, I guess we can be specific here. We'll just return the one that we used. So when you've got just one, it's not really that big of a deal. I think you can have up to a thousand before you max out but it's a good idea to uh, stay on top of these because it's not that difficult to generate more than, uh, more than you can actually process if you're not being careful about this. Okay. So that's the very, very, oh, and the one more thing is we're going to go ahead and save this asset, save loaded asset. Cause as you can see here, we've got that little asterisk. So just to save ourselves a step down the, down the path here, we can just go ahead and make sure that this thing is getting saved automatically. And we can also just overwrite this file. We're not going to get bugged with a, uh, you know, like an overwrite warning or something. So that could be, you know, I guess a double-edged sword, but I like it because it's nice to just kind of iterate quickly and, and uh, see different variations. Okay. So that is the fundamentals, the very most basic version of working with dynamic meshes with an editor utility widget. In the next video, we'll start looking at some additional things that we can do and exposing some parameters out here so that we get more control over the end result.